for me to land them in this one. Gone. And more than half the others with him. We were ambushed out in the cursed lands. Cultists of this absolute. Several froze, begged us to surrender. But they were toying with us, making examples. And we'd had enough of taking it. Those of us who cut free just kept running till we found this place. The others... Maybe the cult got them. Maybe the curse. Zevlor had hope. It didn't save him. A little sense will serve us better, I think. But... Thanks. It was sweet of you to try. A faded advertisement, its message still faintly legible. Fresh veg and fancy fruit. Buy two, get one free. What's that? Welcome and all, but, uh... It's good to see you again. I'd ask if you've made any progress with your little problem. But the telltale twitching of your eye is answer enough. My dear, nothing is coincidence. Mortals trifle themselves with free will. As if their betters have not molded every potential path ahead. <laughs> no offense meant, of course. I'm sure everyone in Last Light thinks they could have changed things. They're not the only ones ripe for temptation, you know. My last contract here fed me for decades. Family troubles. Not my family, of course. I never surrender knowledge for free, but one good turn deserves another, does it not? To repay you for the soul sent my way, I offer a taste of the truth. Catholic Thorm, proud father, man of faith, utter fool. On the night the Harpers sealed him away, someone murdered his entire army in cold blood. Now who would possibly benefit from such a massacre? If you want to know more, I could work the exchange of such precious knowledge into the terms of your future deal. But the time for quibbling over clauses and contracts hasn't quite arrived. You'll be limping back to me soon enough. For now, I'm afraid you've already made me late for a meeting with another client. I'll see you soon. Ah! You found your way! Good. I thought I'd scout ahead, check for any nasty surprises, of which I found a great deal. Shades, death, harpers, flaming fist, and this, of course, and the makings of an alchemist's workbench. Ingredients, too. There's a recipe I'm trying to replicate. Something that might help you. That is, if you're still going to help Wolbrin and the others. In that case, you'll be very pleased to learn what I have in store for you. A new type of smoke powder. All the bang and boom of the original, but with an extra surprise. I call it the Brilliant Retort. You'll need it. If you're going to survive this cursed place, you'll need it if you're going to get into Moonrise Towers and help the Deep Gnomes taken prisoner there. You'll need it. If you're going to save Wilbrin. They didn't get trapped, 
They were kidnapped, taken against their will by those cultists. If I ever get my hands on one of them, well, with you on the job, perhaps I won't have to find out. I'll do my part according to my talents, and you, I hope, will do yours. The brilliant retort will aid you. Thus, I will make it. When I'm finished making it. Unless you've got access to a 300-year-old Tempusian apothecarial almanac? No. But that's for me to worry about. You... you do whatever it is you do. Some of us are counting on you. Good to see you're still breathing. It's the best we can hope. What a vicious looking creature. I swear its eyes are following me. Free as you are. Please, be welcome. Have a drink. Oh, my God! To your very good health. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's an honor, milady. I will gladly drink to your health as well, Garlack. You perceive a faint hint of cloth grass, a herb that is said to elicit the truth. Jahira smiles at you knowingly. It doesn't spoil the taste, if that's what you're wondering. You will be refreshed, and I will be reassured. You don't know what you're missing. Well over a century old, and yet it hasn't lost a hint of flavor. Still not quite so sure about you, though. People tend to lose more than just flavor when illithids get their hands on them. I speak from experience. There's an air about you. Something alien. Answer me true, and do not lie. The parasite is changing you, isn't it? And you're certain you will continue to resist? Good. I will take your word for it. And hold you to it, too. I have every reason to be cautious. I've traced people like you. People with parasites in their brains. All the way here from Baldur's Gate. The cult of the Absolute is spreading through the city. Quietly, quickly, and with unsettling deliberation. We tracked them to this ancient village, only to be faced with a man we killed and buried over a century ago. General Gadric Thorm. Remember that name. He's the leader of the Absolutists. He was a Sharan once. Took to building an army of dark justice, but he's returned. We met him on the road here. He healed. Right? You are that hope. And the wit to know when it will not avail you, I think. Protected by your artifact, you can info- Find out what- Once Gatherick is without his shield, the sword, together we assault- Any cure starts. Whatever magic- Until then, we keep drinking- You're not our own- Isabel. She cast the moon- She's upstairs in her- You 
know something. Take it easy, what? Mug of ale, four CP. Chopped cheek, three SP. Daily special, inquire. Nice to see a friendly face come out the shadow. An extra blade could be the difference between rescuing Duke Ravenguard. You're heading into the towers, are you? He still won't speak. Just keeps going with the bloody... Nothing of use on his person. His original writ of duty. Signed by El Tanims. He must know something. We believe the cultists have taken Duke Ravenguard to Moonrise Towers. I don't suppose you found a way in. Isabel cleared this place, and he just appeared. We think it beggars belief he's alive. Hopefully, he'll come round. Tell us something useful about getting through the shadows. Right now, he seems to have little more to him than a refrain from some song or other. Cleric of Saluna. She's got a room upstairs if you want to meet her. Just don't interrupt her while she's doing whatever it is that keeps this place shadow free. I doubt it too. Unfortunately, I won't be. The council sent a carrier pigeon with news at the city. I'll request that Lord Gortash send some of them to aid in the- Holy shit. That's my old boss. The guy who sold me to Zariel. You know the name Gortash. A councillor with considerable influence on Baldurian industry and politics. Lord Gortash is the man responsible for the creation of the Steel Watch. It's no wonder he earned the title. The Steel Watch are the future of warfare. Gondian automatons that can be sent into battle without risking any lives. Except those of our enemies. Lord Gortash had only completed work on the prototypes before Ravenguard and I left for Elteral, but even they were formidable. With the Steel Watch at our backs, we can storm the tower whatever Ketherick throws at us, I'm sure of it. I'll do my best, but there's every chance I'll fall to the curse of all the cult before I reach the city. Don't count on me and assume no aid is coming. Work with Jahira. That harper's mind is as sharp as her blade. Follow her guidance. Farewell. We'll meet again, God's willing. The journey back to... Heard you're meant to be heading toward the towers. With a single word, Floric could charge the coast's most powerful force with taking back the Grand Duke. We ought to be doing just that, not babysitting this stump. And yet, ordered. I'd rather lend you my blood. Flame color. That's your name, isn't it? Art color. I'm Fistula. Daniel and me are climb, climbing up a tree. We. We need you, sir. One of our own's been taken. A Grand Duke. You might know something that could help us bring him back. We found him out in the shadows, just... wandering. Nothing survives out there for long. Don't know how he made it, or where he came from. This is no physical ailment. It is a spiritual malaise. The man's mind has been gripped by the shadow fell. Yet it has not broken. No idea, I'm afraid. Whoever it is must be someone important to him. He's been saying the same thing over and over ever since we found him. You hear me, don't you, sir? You might not be able to answer, but you hear me. A century locked inside a Shar and Curse will do things to a man. But you're not alone, sir. We're here with you. 
And I'm sure you've got relations, maybe some long-lived friends even, who want to be seeing you. No, not till I met Art, anyway. It seems to be all he remembers. This was in his pocket. He doesn't seem to have any reaction to it now, but he held on to it for a hundred years, anyway. Thank you. So he was at the House of Healing. Wonder what he found. Gortash is a lord now. I'd like to clap eyes on this steel watch of his. You already know the story. I was Gortash's bodyguard, loyal as they come, when he made the deal with Zariel. She got a test subject for her infernal engine. I never found out what he got. This is the kind of man who gets a title. Authority makes me sick. No. They always seem to get it, don't they? Soldier? Please, if you have any idea how to get through to him. You notice nothing that might indicate a prognosis. Vanilla. We are living. We are dead. Two of us safe. Without a reminder of who he is, of what he held dear, his mind will remain lost to the darkness. His fingertips sport calluses and toughened skin, as if from manual labor. If he does, he isn't sane. You can help. Monsters. No, not till I met R anyway. Thank you. I've heard the stories. Of I thought you'd be in the city by now. We were ambushed by cultists. Half of us were captured, the other half ran here. Off the anvil into the forge. We'll find them. Hopefully. Before you run off into the belly of the beast, there's something I need to tell you. Well, two things. Good news and bad news. The good news, obviously. I only need one more piece of infernal iron to craft an insulating chamber that can make it possible for Karlik to... Touch people! Exactly! Oh my god. It's really happening. It's been so long. 
We've got the iron. Let's do this thing. Hang on. I think you'll want to hear the bad news too. Yeah, sure. But first, fix me. Please. Fine. Well, go on then. I don't enjoy saying this, Karlak. But there's no two ways about it. Your engine is going to blow and I can't fix it. I'm not sure anyone can. It's simply too hot to exist here in the material plane. Unless you return to Avernus, for good, this thing is going to blow. Sooner rather than later. But... But still, you, you can give me something that will let me touch again, right? Safely? Yes, but... That's all I need to know. Do it. Please. Well, all right. This shouldn't take long. Same as last time. You'll need to install it yourself. This should do the trick. So did it work? Only one way to find out. <sighs> Thank you. Believe it. Thank you, Damon. Thank you so much. It's the least I could do. Before you go, there's something I need to tell you. That engine of yours, it's contained for the moment, but it's just too hot to exist here in the material plane indefinitely. I know you know that, but the thing is, there's a cure. I wasn't making any headway with the mechanics, none at all. The environment here is just too cold to sustain metals like the ones inside you. You have to return to Avernus. For good. Or this thing is going to burn you up from the inside out. And sooner than you think. The minute I set foot back in Avernus, Zarya will force me back into service. I'm not doing her bidding again. I'd rather die. I get that, but don't rule it out. The world just might be better with you in it. Even in Avernus. I won't stop trying to figure out a cure, but... At this point, I think we all have to face the inevitable. Right? All this doom and gloom. I have something far more exciting on my mind than this bloody tin box. Thanks, Damon. Really, you've given me more than I could ever repay. It's been my pleasure. Good luck, both of you. Look after yourself, all right? Need anything? Absolutely. Rare to get your hands on this stuff. Well done keeping it to hand. There you are. And be careful who you show that to. It might draw the wrong kind of attention. Need anything? I'll be here if you need it. Need anything? It's perfect, really. Just a moment, I'll be able to work. Need anything? 
I know well the pain of seeing your life's hourglass running empty. Grasping at any means of slowing the grains as they slip inexorably through your fingers. Karlak's fate may be ordained, but her actions are not. She will make each breath count. We can be sure of that. Poor Karlak. She can finally seek out the touch of another, only to be told she might not have much time left. Difficult to say. A fellow servant of the Night Singer would surely be an ally to me under most circumstances. But something doesn't add up. I'll need to see where his allegiances truly lie. This is the best day. The best day! I'm so happy for me too. Now I just need to find someone to cuddle up to tonight and I'll be the happiest woman on the Sword Coast. I'm not sure. Depends who's got me in mind. Withers was giving me the old eye the other night. Then again, maybe it was just an old eye. Listen, I'm never going back. If you said I could die right now or live a thousand years in the hells, I'd choose to go out now with my freedom intact. I don't expect anyone to understand that. But I've been dealt a hand most people don't have to contemplate playing. <sighs> Thanks, soldier. Your support means I've got one less thing to worry about. <laughs> that means a lot to me. You really are the best of the best. Of the best. Soldier. Like I got something back. Something I've wanted for a really long time. When I touched you, I felt like... a real person. My heart was racing. But I didn't hurt you. I don't have to be afraid of myself anymore. I don't have to hold back. <laughs> Not sure the world's ready for unleashed Karlak, but it's getting it anyway. Thanks to Damon. Thanks to you. <laughs> Thanks to fate. Ugh. I don't want to think about that now. Misery always overstays its welcome, and joy leaves too soon. I'll cry later, but not now. Touch! Touch everything! Touch everyone that'll let me. Shake hands, dance a waltz, maybe even kiss a face or two if I find a good candidate. The world's my fun house. Me too, soldier. Gods, me too. For every knock we take, I feel like I get a little treat just to keep me going. What's on your mind? Mmm, it's toasty in here. Close your mind to mine. 
Kindred spirit, but I only wish to be an ox. Do you understand? My little secret. I'm not a busybody. You ought to use me as an example, or you might get yourself in trouble. That's up to you. Good little hero. Scurry on now. I admire your ability to graciously suffer the frustration of your desires. Toodle. The gate was my hunting ground. I might be responsible for some of these. You need something? Shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. Time's over, pet. Ah, oh, I love this time of year. The dickheads start popping up wherever you look. What do you want, Mizora? 
Drop the attitude and perk up your ears. You've got a new mission. Absolute's cult has gone and grabbed one of Zariel's assets. A devil. And a powerful one at that. They're locked up in the cult's fortress, Moonrise Towers. And you're getting him out. Will, your playmate's wasting precious time. Let's see about getting his priorities fixed. Ahem. <clears throat> Clause Z, Section 13. Should Promised Soul refuse obeyance or neglect duty, the Pact Holder shall cast the Promised into a Vernus as a Lemur. I'll make it simple. Will fails or refuses, and he turns to a thick blob of stink flesh and sinks to a Vernus. Now, be a good boy and play fetch, pup, or you'll spend an eternity sizzling in the hells. Nazora's words may be flippant, but they are tinged with desperation. She cannot afford for Will to fail this mission. This may be your best chance to negotiate Will out of his pact. Oh, and what condition is that? Your mind links with Will's, drawn in by his increasing panic. What are you doing? Will relaxes, and your connection fades. Interesting. Now, why should I go letting my favorite pet off his leash? You recall an old incantation from a children's story said to void a devil's contract. Abi diabole et nunquam ready. <laughs> I've never seen such a fearless display of sheer idiocy. Bravo! <laughs> Fine. I'll play your game. But I amend the pact once the mission's done, not before. Clause F, Section 9. Soulbinder shall bestow reward or favor only upon soul bearers' fulfillment of related obligation. Now, to Moonrise, pet. And do you mind the shadows? They've been especially hungry. You know, I feel a connection between us. Like we're two souls walking the same path. Every step we walk trails blood. Killing is an instinct for us. I respect you for that. I would keep the murders in our own camp to a minimum. But otherwise, we're very much on the same page. I just worry that we're not considering all our options when it comes to our uninvited guests. How many people are infected with them, do you think? Hundreds? Thousands? And they're not just goblin trash. There are powerful people in the Worm's Thrall. Whoever's waiting for us at Moonrise Towers controls it all. But if we can take that control from them, imagine the power we'd wield. Isn't it? Imagine the entire cult under our thumb. I'm just saying, there's an opportunity before us. If we can control the tadpoles, we can keep ourselves safe 
and enjoy a little world domination on the side. <laughs> you can't tell me that doesn't sound fun. I knew I was right about you. It's so good to find a kindred spirit. Of course, this all assumes we live long enough to find this, uh, moonrise. But I'm feeling optimistic. God damn it! Why did it have to be Mizora? Why did it have to be Zario? We're supposed to risk our necks to get one of her assets. What if it's a runaway like me? Or something far worse? I want to believe that as much as you do. Almost as much as Will does. But I just know there will be more to the story. There always is. It's a bad idea to play games with the devil. You'd never win. Not ever. Hey, soldier. If death is soon to take Karlak, she should make every moment as rich as the last. Fight viciously, roar loudly, step boldly. She must make herself known. You know, I've been catching myself smiling. Very serious of you. But go ahead. I won't pretend that I don't know what you mean. Ever since we entered the Shadow Curse, I felt like something's calling to me. Some purpose that I need to find. Give me some time. If I can figure out whatever it is that I need to do, well, then there should be more time for us. How can I help? Mazora set me on fiends inside and outside the hells. She's never ordered a rescue. Gods. She makes a mockery of everything the blade stands for. Such an asshole. The same thought crossed my mind. I'm only to hunt the infernal, the demonic, and the heartless. But nowhere was it stated that I can't help one. Either we find it, or I made a mindless blob clawing at demons on the front line of the blood war. And it means everything to me. I always knew what my future held, and I know I chose right. Thank you for sticking your neck out for me. I mean it. But I'm not going to celebrate till I'm actually free. I can feel Mazora scheming, plotting. She won't let me go without making a fuss. Trust me on that. Then we know our mission. All roads converge at Moonrise. I was 11 when the counselor spotted and slayed an assassin who stalked farther from the shadows. I was 13 when she brought word of a goblin warband advancing on Rivington. Her keen scouting saved a hundred lives that day. The counselor's loyalty to my father is beyond question. She's as steady as Tear's heartbeat, as upstanding as the Sword Mountains. Father's at Moonrise Towers, and we need to save him. They want violence, they want control, they want Baldur's Gate. Who better than Grand Duke Ravengar to surrender it? Who better than the commander of the Flaming Fist to dismantle its defenses? They will infect him, and the city's guardian will become its ruin, unless we put a stop to it. We can't and we won't. The shadows be damned. The shadow curse is upon us. As foul as I remember it. Perhaps even worse. 
But with the Oak Father's blessing, we may soon see it banished from these lands. He is? Then I must see him. Insensible or not, he knows something. Thaniel is no ordinary child. He is the very spirit of this land. If this fist knows where he is, then perhaps we can save him. Save everything. I will go to see him at once. Join me when you can. now a bosom companion. Take care that thou art not distracted on thy quest, seeking the comforts of the flesh. Recall that in time all becomes dust and bone. Thy Dost thou require a new ally? The voice of the Absolute is strong here, and getting stronger. I don't know how much longer I can resist it. But it's good to see you're making progress. You took an unexpected route here. You did a brave thing. Saving those people in the grove. Don't be so hard on yourself. It's not your fault the world is wicked. You did the right thing. It just doesn't stop. We are being bombarded by waves of telepathic energy. Wave after wave, with hardly a breath between them. I almost dare not rest. Each wave a set of orders to the infected. The order for your transformation has been given many times already. Yes, but the orders are oddly erratic. As if the Absolute cannot make up its mind. I don't fully understand. In any case, the Absolute knows you carry me with you now. It wants to retrieve me. I am the only one who can resist the Absolute's influence. <sighs> Hence its fear of me, its... its desperation. Unfortunately, that also means it is dedicating more and more resources to my retrieval. The task ahead is monumental, but we're all that stands between victory for the Absolute and freedom for all. This is not just about you and I anymore. It has become far bigger than us. You must infiltrate Moonrise Towers, discover the secrets of the Absolute, and put an end to it. So we can finally be free. Now I must rest. And you must carry on. Do not let my efforts be in vain. Take a moment, Bran. Savor our victory over the Dryder. I'll celebrate when Ketherick's dead. But not before. What's in the line, Bran? It's not the sheer of the least. Have you ever known me to cheer? <laughs> 
Isabel's in her room up. <laughs> it's true then. He's met Daniel. There's no other way he'd know that name. This is just what we needed. Well done. We need to wake him. He must know something about where to find Thaniel. If he was able to escape the Shadowfell, then it mustn't have managed to consume his spirit. Well, not all of it anyway. We need to unlock whatever's left of him inside his head. There must be something to trigger him. A word, a memory, an item. We just need to find it. Without Daniel, no. And I don't know how I can find him without speaking to this man. I don't deserve you, my friend. Has he shown any sign of coming to his senses? No. <laughs> he keeps saying Daniel's name. He must know. Without Daniel, I don't... De A hundred years. Quite ready for you. Our supplies. Is anyone keeping an eye on those children? Maybe not, Mom. All's well that ends. Oh, not as bad as it could have. I didn't realize I had an audience. The true soul who's going to save us all. I'm Isabel. Pleased to meet you. Myself and Our Lady are doing what we can to hold the line. I hear you and your tadpole will be our offense. Free from the Absolute's influence, yet able to walk among cultists. It's almost too good to be true. Let me guess. The blessing falls uneasily over your tainted body. You can't help but dream. To kill her would destroy all of last light. You yearn for it so deeply. Perfect. It'll make you immune to the lesser effects of the Shadow Curse, which will get you closer to the towers.
It won't be enough to protect you against the areas of utter darkness, though, where the curse is strongest. This lantern should, though. Ketherick is a frightening man, but you have something he doesn't. Allies worth having. While you're busy in the towers, I'll be sure to... Wait. Do you hear that? Something's wrong. Hello, Isabel. Marcus, is that you? What's happened to you? I've been blessed. You can be too. Come with me, and you can hear all about it from Catherick himself. He's a flaming fist. Or was. Came with the others when we created this haven. And I thank you for your hospitality. True soul, my instructions are clear. Take the girl to Ketherick, alive. A haunting face swims into your mind's eye. If what's going on? If you have something to say, say it. You two. You're... you're like them, aren't you? Absolutists. What fools you both are. Ketherick will never give you whatever it is he's promised you. He already has. Time to go, Isabel. Dear moment to play the Reaper you play so well. Why let him take her alive when you could flood them both with a bloodbath? Come along, Isabel. 